No sooner do you pass the threshold back into town than do the villagers surround you as though welcoming home great heroes. You inform the mayor that you've wiped out all the monsters, and though he seems momentarily delighted at the news, he also seems terribly flustered. This isn't the time for that now. You start to worry about Queenie. A village woman comes running and barks angrily at the assemblage. She explains that Queenie is going into labor, which might explain the men's panic at what they ought to be doing. The woman points at Laddie. You there, come along and help. Without waiting for a reply to her demand, the woman drags Laddie off. Difficult though it may be right now, all you can do is pray for Queenie and the child's safe delivery. Guess all we can do is wait, says the man regretfully. Blight is restless, his mind clearly abuzz with worry for Queenie. Queenie's voice echoes out of the maiden shrine. You hope she can endure the pain. The mayor gazes out at the swampy surroundings, murmuring to himself. To think that the entire village would come together for the sake of a new life. He looks as though not doing anything makes him uneasy and busies himself giving bits of food to the bird perched atop his rucksack. A baby's cry cuts through the silence, breaking the village from its tense reverie. Time, which felt as though it had frozen, begins to tick away once again. Faster than you can let loose a sigh of relief, Blight takes off in the direction of the maiden shrine. The baby's here. You rush after the amative attendant to the maiden shrine. The newborn's cries echo through the maiden shrine. The villagers present for the birth have weary but happy expressions on their faces, and they wipe the sweat from their brows. The midwife breathes out her tension. Stars above, what a relief. Truly a blessing, truly. An elderly woman's eyes are filled with tears as though the newborn were her own child. Laddie sits in a heap on the floor as though unable to stand, seeming dazed from helping with the birth. Though she looks tired, she flashes you a proud smile as if to say, can you believe it? Blight asks timidly, is, is the baby? A young woman hands him a cloth wrapped bundle. 
perhaps because he has finally felt the weight of his own child in his arms. Blight's expression cracks, and he begins to weep, overcome by emotion. Such a relief, he says. He repeats himself several times as he walks over to Queenie and shows her the child's face. As though having just fought a fierce battle, Queenie's face is lined with exhaustion and covered in sweat. Though her expression is somewhat pained, she looks at her child with a smile of deepest affection. The Onyx Maiden and her attendant have named the child Melanie, a word from the language of spirits, meaning eternal happiness. With a tear-stained face, Queenie gently inclines her head to her exuberant attendant. But then the strength seems to seep out of her. With those final words to her two most beloved, the onyx maiden's eyes close for the last time. With its only maiden lost, this island is surely destined for ruin. As you prepare to sail away, you notice that the island is submerged just a bit more than it had been when you arrived. Almost as though the ocean is trying to swallow it up, now that it's bereft of its maiden. When you part ways, Blight hands the now useless Maiden's Relic over to you. You are hesitant to accept, thinking he might want to keep it as a memento of his beloved. Only when he insists, saying, Don't lose your home. Don't lose your island. Are you persuaded? The Onyx Attendant then heads homeward vowing to make Melanie's life a happy one. Monsters run rampant across the sinking lands. The people of Fenmos remain beset by numerous hardships. From aboard your ship, you watch the East Isle shrink into the distance. Eternal happiness. You pray that is what their future holds. <laughs>